Good morning, everybody. You are very welcome to our webinar, Evolving with B2B Customer Experience. I'm Rebecca Doherty from Magento, an Adobe company. And today we will be discussing what it means to provide high value physical and digital customer experiences to B2B customers. And we will be talking through the challenges of delivering B2B growth. But first, while we have some people joining, we have some housekeeping rules. You will see four sections or boxes on your console. These are first the slides box, of course. You can make it bigger by dragging on the edges. The Q&A box. Please type in your questions as you think of them and we will answer them at the end. Thirdly is the resources box. Within this, you'll find the links to two of the papers or guides that we reference in the webinar. And finally, our lovely speakers. You will have a speakers box on your console, which gives their LinkedIn addresses and their email addresses. Finally, in terms of housekeeping, we will be making the slides and the recording available afterwards. You will get an email shortly after the webinar. So now to hand over to our presenters. First up, um, I will introduce Georgia Barry, who is our guest speaker today. She is an e-commerce strategist at Vimo, who are a elite solution implementation partner, and Georgia is London-based. We also have Eric, who will speak first, and he is an account executive for Magento, and he is speaking to you from Sweden today. So. Thank you very much, Rebecca. Thanks. Thank you very much, and hi all. Uh, it's it's really uh, I think I speak for all of us when I say that we're very excited to to be here today and have have all of you joining. Uh, and I I wanted to say that we we live in a quite fascinating time right now, um, and I, I truly believe that we're, we're lucky to be part of this time and age uh, where you know people's differences are getting more and more clear, and uh, we we learn so much from each other. Uh, now, Magento and, and Adobe, we're an online company. We do most of our things online, but uh, meeting and interacting with people face to face is still very important. And we all know how, how different we are as individuals uh, in how we like to communicate as well as how we want to be communicated with. We're also different in our expectations and, and these expectations on the type of experiences that we want are constantly changing. It's now becoming more and more important for all businesses that wants to stay competitive to create unique and best in class experience online to meet all of that customer demand. And this new world of, of excellent consumer experiences are actually very much driving the expectations of the B2B buyer. So we now expect more of the same type of experiences when we buy for a business as we do in our personal life as, as consumers or shoppers. Uh, I wanted to try and, and illustrate this uh, with an example. And uh, I've been a, a Mac customer for many years uh, using the, the MacBooks and all other sort of Apple products, uh, as many of us do. And if I want to go and buy something for uh, my, my Apple environment at home, I go directly to Apple. Uh, let's say I need a charger for my MacBook. When I type in a charger, they know exactly what I might be looking for. Uh, and if they don't, I can actually just simply pick the product uh, based on my device, add it to the cart. Uh, and just complete the checkout experience. Now, this is a very smooth and simple experience. It's, it's very nice for me, and it, it's, uh, it's not very clunky, and it's simple. Now, if I want to do the same thing for work, I have to go to our internal procurement system. Uh, and I, it's a little hard to find where it is. It's usually on some internal uh, intranet somewhere, uh, but that's not really the portal's fault. But once I'm there, uh, I try to type in what I'm looking for, Apple charger, and I get no results. So I try to change it up. I say, I want a Mac charger, and I get no, no results for that as well. So what I have to do is I have to go back to the, not even charger works, by the way, but I have to go back to the page, the home page, and search for Apple to get a list of all the Apple products. And here I, I have to navigate to try and find the chargers. And this is, this is where I realize it's actually called a power adapter in the world of Apple. So I search for Apple Power Adapter, and finally I get all the adapters uh, in a list, and I can now add it to my cart and complete the checkout process. 
Now, this <clears throat> is just a very simple example, but it, it is what thousands of B2B purchasers has to go through on a daily basis when they're buying for their business. And when you think about it, it should actually be easier for my company because they actually already know in my internal systems what kind of MacBook I ordered uh, a year, two years ago, and all the sort of uh, channels that I use at work and all the, the various information that I provided uh, in, in terms of data. So to understand where we are today, I think it might be useful to go uh, back to have a look at where we actually come from. So <clears throat> the Industrial Revolution, it really brought us some incredible new technology. And I think we're, we're all very familiar with the automobiles and the telephones and all of that. But what's important to highlight is that back then, the seller was very much in charge of setting the expectations for their customers. And they usually owned a direct relationship with their end user. And it was predominantly through a, a direct single channel approach. And technology innovations, both in the industrial and the digital revolutions, then brought us some unprecedented opportunity. I think we're we're now, you know, we've been in the information age. We know everything about anything. And if we don't, we can just find it uh, within a couple of seconds. And that, that's incredible on its own. But when we're coming out of the information age, we are now actually entering the age of the consumer. So all that opportunity that the technology advances has brought us has given us the feeling of entitlement. And I think we can all recognize this. We, we are now entitled buyers. We have higher expectations. And the power has very much shifted from the seller to the buyer, which means that we as consumers are now in total control. And we see this ourselves in Adobe. Uh, our customers are coming in a lot later in, the, in our so-called sales process. Uh, they're a lot more educated. They have better and higher expectations on the experience that they will get from Adobe. And with this development, it has also been an exponential increase in channels and touch points. And there are now countless ways for your buyers to interact with your brand. So the modern buyer now expects sort of a completely connected, seamless experience across all of these channels. So they expect what we call a, an omni-channel experience. I'm not sure if you've seen this guy, uh, Brian Solis. I think if you haven't, you should Google him. You look at his uh, t uh, TED Talks and YouTube uh, clips. Um, he's a, a visionary. He was with the Altimeter Group. And he summarizes this pretty simply. The customer experience is now what defines your brand. Because if we want to speak about selling to these entitled uh, buyers, we need to understand them. And what's important to highlight is that these buyers of today, if you can't meet their expectations, they will go somewhere else. Right? They want the excellent experiences. They want beautiful experiences, both online and offline. And they don't really care what's behind all of these experiences. And the fact that it's difficult is not their problem. There, there, there's a huge value here for B2B companies if you can start providing that frictionless purchasing experience for your buyers. And if you don't get it right, or if you keep saying that it's difficult to get right, they will go somewhere else. They know your competitors. They are comparing constantly the experiences that they get with your uh, co competitors to the ones that they're getting from you. And as a matter of fact, 71% are prepared to move to someone else just after one sim simple poor experience, uh, buying experience. So I'm going to hand over to Georgia now, uh, who's going to talk a little bit about the strategic priorities that they have identified at FIMO. Thank you, Eric. Yes, I, uh, I have good news. All is not lost. Um, and studies suggest that 90% of B2B leaders are already understanding that customer experience is very crucial to their company's strategic priorities. And if we have a quick look at some of the strategic priorities that businesses are um, focused on for the next two years, we're seeing things like providing an omni-channel experience, providing end-to-end -end order visibility, ensuring you have a full 360-degree view of your customer, as well as reducing delivery costs. And I'm going to hand back to Eric now, who'll take us through some of the existing customer experience challenges that we're going to talk about today. Thank you very much, Georgia. So we're going to share some insights today. It's from a study that was conducted by Worldwide Business Research. Uh, and there is a booklet available. It's in the, uh, it's, there's a URL within this webcast where you can actually download and have a look at this. Uh, I, I highly recommend that you do. So what WBA did, they, they, they surveyed hundreds of C-level executives from manufacturing and distribution companies all across Europe. Uh, and these companies are actually all considered as well to be uh, B2B first companies. So it's highly relevant. Um, and before going into the actual challenges, 
I think it's uh, it's useful to highlight uh, something here. Where, according to this study, thirty four percent of the businesses said they had an actual transactional website, and the majority of them, therefore, has websites that are only purely providing information. So there is a, a, a a huge potential here to get a first mover advantage on the B2B e-commerce channels um, and, and beat your competition and be first with, with creating that transactional experience. Uh, so with that said, I'm going to start looking into the challenges here a little bit. Um, and the five challenges that were identified, it's around systems integrations. It's around siloed systems, teams, and data, legacy infrastructure and systems. Competition from marketplaces, we really have to talk about that one, uh, as well as the ability to adopt new features. So let's talk about the first challenge around integrations. Now, in this study from by the WBA, when asked about constraints, 59% said that the most common issue is B2B systems integration. So it's connecting the dots between systems of record, systems of engagement, and systems of transaction. It is proving to be very, very difficult. Uh, and other very important areas as well are on the user experience side, where 40% said that they're having issues in creating a, a good user experience for their customers. And integrating the front end and back end systems are causing a lot of problems for B2B companies, as they are traditionally also working off of a, and I'm sure you can recognize this, a supplier or customer portal model. And it's usually very heavily uh, relying on the ERP system, which is hard to change and hard to adjust to. Other areas include data flows uh, and actual website design as well. Um, now, when planning on projects and how to overcome some of these challenges through projects, there's another challenge that appears. So more than half of B2B leaders admitted to Forrester in a study to having issues finding an integrated partner that can help them. So selecting the right partner is incredibly important. The partner must be able to support and lead a wide scope of initiatives from strategy to change management and continuous innovation. So as Magento, we, we absolutely agree with this, which is why we develop a strong partner network of integrators uh, such as Vimo. Uh, but when selecting the partner, it's very important that they have that holistic approach uh, and can deliver on all those different aspects of the project. Now, when selecting the actual technology platform, B2B leaders tend to look for the performance, reliability, and the completeness of the solution or the platform. But what's even more interesting to me, at least, is that they, they look for a platform that can support both the B2B and the B2C sales channel uh, within one solution. These companies are operating as well in a very traditional environment. I'm, I'm, it goes across all those manufacturing and distribution companies, um, and their systems and the companies as well has been around for a very long time. So many of the B2B companies rely on legacy systems and infrastructure to run their business. And not only are these systems difficult to integrate, we already touched on that a little bit, but they're also in many B2B businesses old and hard to maintain or replace. And this goes from everything from ERP to warehouse management systems or order management, et cetera. These systems have typically grown within the organization to become really sticky and mission critical. And also another thing, these systems are not designed as well, uh, and I'm sure you can relate to that, but they're, they're not designed with a user experience or customer experience or even e-commerce in mind, uh, which means that they get both clunky to operate, but also to interface with. So apart from integrations and, and legacy systems and infrastructure, another very important area is the challenge around siloed teams and getting the executive buy-in. So WBR found in the study that 26% of businesses are struggling to convince the senior staff to take a more customer-centric approach. So not really getting the executive buy-in buy in, in siloed organizations makes it very hard to move the needle on any sort of improvement project. Examples could be that marketing is responsible for digital advertising, but they don't really look at it from their, their own silo. Product, inf uh, product management can be responsible for uh, product information or enriching that, but they don't really enrich it properly for an e-commerce experience uh, that, that is seen as positive for the, the end customer. And then sales, uh, I'm sure you've seen this, sales, they're responsible for creating revenue, um, but they sometimes see these type of portals and 
uh, and digital channels as competitors for both their job, but essentially their, their paycheck. Now let's, let's talk a little bit about the elephant in the room. And I'm not sure if you, if you started researching this yet, but a lot of companies are feeling very threatened today by the new marketplaces like Amazon and Google Shopping. Now, when the buyer expectations has shifted, 57% say that they feel it's a challenge to remain competitive uh, against the likes of Amazon. But however, as the majority feel they need to be more competitive, 43% uh, actually say they can still offer other value that can't be undercut by these marketplaces. So I guess there is a bit of an optimism there uh, where there's added value to dealing directly with the company or the brand. I'm going to hand it over to Georgia. I think you, you guys have a study on uh, marketplaces as well. That's very interesting. Yes, we do. Thank you, Eric. So the first thing I want to just present to you is the fact that 82% of business buyers say that they have used Amazon to make a purchase for work. This obviously presents a massive opportunity for businesses, but there's quite a few considerations to take into account. And as we mentioned, Rebecca has given a couple of links to some useful information. And one of those links is to our Amazon uh, report, which basically outlines the benefits and limitations of selling through this channel. Um, the first thing I'm going to talk through is the benefits. And in terms of Vimo's thoughts on Amazon, um, if we break it down, one of the first great benefits to, to putting your product on this channel is instant access to a huge stream of purchase-ready customers. These customers are already aware that they want a particular product, and the access to this traffic is a huge plus, particularly for young businesses who have yet to develop a large audience. In addition to this, customers really trust Amazon. They have a stellar reputation, and by selling through this channel, your business will benefit as a result of this trust. It's incredibly easy to also to start selling on Amazon, and it can take as little as 24 hours to get up and running if you have all the relevant information on hand. An additional benefit is FBA, which is fulfillment by Amazon. And essentially, this means storing your products in Amazon's fulfillment centers and letting them pick, pack, ship, and provide the customer service for these products. So when Amazon is taking care of the heavy lifting, you're able to free up resources and add value to your business in other areas. Funny enough, what, <laughs> what we see as the positives also are the negatives and the, the sort of the points that hold you back from, from selling on this channel. And if we break that down, we're talking about millions of loyal customers but these are not your customers. These are Amazon customers. They own the marketplace and they own the customers, not you. In addition, branding restrictions is a huge limitation. You'll be able to display your logo or name and a few images, but that's pretty much it. Uh, you're talking about no linking to your external website or social media. This is zero control, which means saying goodbye to marketing campaigns, targeted promotions, and personalized shopping experiences. In addition, if you decide to opt in for FBA, then you'll also be losing control of your inventory. Imagine Amazon needs to transport your stock from one warehouse to another, making your products unsellable whilst in transit. By letting Amazon take control of your inventory, you also lose control of your logistics chain. And with concepts like last mile logistics, it'll be Amazon ultimately delivering to and interacting with your customer, not you and your business. Funny enough, one very real risk is having a successful product. And you might ask why. This is because Amazon can very easily go and replicate this product and, and scale before you've had a chance to adjust. Um, they could, in addition, list this replica product ahead of your own on the channel, <clears throat> which demonstrates why putting all your eggs in one Amazon basket can be a really dangerous tactic. Finally, they are the numbers. And this is really what talks. Once Amazon has taken its fee, how much will actually be left for you and your business? These are very, very strong considerations to take into account. I'm going to hand back to Eric now, who will take us through our final challenge. Thank you for that, Georgia. Uh, I think <clears throat> we can just summarize that by saying that you can actually, you should and you could leverage marketplaces and you, you could actually even compete with them. Uh, but it will be on experiences and the relationship that you have with your customer and not so much the price. Uh, and there is a risk, of course, of losing some control there uh, of your brand and the experience with your brand. Now, the fifth, the fifth challenge uh, is around the business's ability to adopt new features. So it is getting increasingly important to be able to plug in new features and functionality um, 
as e-commerce evolves uh, to be able to meet the demands of your customers. So things like stock checking or multiple payment methods, product reviews, uh, live chat support directly on your uh, customer facing website. If, if your B2B site doesn't have these features, it's already in, in sort of the bottom 50% in terms of, uh, of the customer experience that they deliver. If you remember the system I showed you in the beginning with the, with the power adapter, it's very simple, but those systems are incredibly difficult to update. And they run for 10, 15, sometimes 20 years and might not really accommodate any of the new features that are needed. So e-commerce moves so fast that we move from responsive design mobile applications to now progressive web applications, which you know is the new frontier. So the way that the legacy systems have been designed makes it impossible to keep up with the new needs uh, from the customers. And e-commerce platforms like Magento, we can do this uh, at the speed of your customers' expectations. So businesses today, they must take their B2B sales online. And I'm sure you've heard that almost 60% of the purchase decision has already been made before a, a buyer interacts with you uh, as a seller. Well, 67% of purchases in the manufacturing and pack and ship industries were actually directly influenced by digital. Even more interesting, I think, uh, and more unexpected, is that over 70% of business buyers actually use social media as a tool for research. So face-to-face -face and phone calls are still very important in combination with digital, because that's how you will be part of the overall conversation with your customer. The opportunity is, is huge, but nobody said it will be easy. In, in B2C, in many cases, you can solve these issues uh, simply with software to accommodate for the, for the consumer journeys. In B2B, there is a lot more involved. There is where you know, we talk about digital transformation, we talk about organizational change. So change management becomes a cr critical and crucial part of the process. So I'm talking about bringing the entire organization here with you. Uh, and Magento and Adobe, we can offer the, the software to do that, but it's really up to our partners like Vimo to offer the experience and the consulting services to overcome those organizational challenges and help you get that buy-in uh, and consensus across your organization. Uh, so Magento can help you move at the speed of the expectations on commerce in general and the expectations from your B2B buyer uh, in particular. So I'm gonna hand it over to Georgia now, who's gonna go into some more uh, detailed examples, actual live examples of this. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. Um, the first thing I want to just mention is, you know, we've we've discussed the importance of omnichannel and uh, why you should definitely embrace digital as a B two B business. So, in Vimo, we talk about why digital or physical is not actually the right question. So, why is an omnichannel approach to e commerce as relevant in B two B as in B two C? So what we buy might differ in B2B, but how and why we buy it is influenced largely by the same human behavior. And there's tension between digital commerce and physical sales. Naturally, sometimes it's between the people. Uh, but there's also tension between what a buyer is expecting when buying from a company and what the company delivers digitally and physically. Fundamentally, we buy as a person and not as a company. We're influenced by people and not companies. We're looking for stories to identify with, and we are mostly convinced by our experiences. To further reinforce this, 15% uh, uh, of, so multi-channel customers are typically 15% more profitable than digital only customers. And they're also 25% more profitable than human only experiences. This basically means that B2B companies need to move away from thinking that digital is simply a commercial order entry channel. And instead they need to see it as a driver of omni-channel end-to-end -end customer experiences, combining branches, distributors, salespeople, and contact centers seamlessly with the web. Across industries, up to 69% of customers want omni-channel and multi-channel services. More numbers that really speak to this, uh, business buyers are increasingly looking to transact online, and we see that 63% of, of these buyers research half or more of their work purchases online. 53% of them will make half or more of their work purchases online by 2018, and 61% research work purchases on their smartphones. So we spoke about social media driving research in B2B, and this is also another surprising stat that we came across when we discovered that B2B buyers are researching on their mobile devices just as much as they're expecting to be researching online and on desktops. Eight out of 10 buyers 
eight out of 10 people actually agree that professional buyers expect a consumer grade digital experience from their websites. In the past, consumer facing brands dominated the scene and overshadowed B2B players when it came to innovation and best practice. We believe this to no longer be the case and the expectations are really shifting. So B2B search queries, 50% of these are made on a mobile device. And Boston Consulting Group expect this number to grow to 70% by 2020. In addition to mobile, SEO and on-site search is just as important for B2B as it is for B2C. And this becomes especially critical when businesses have large selections of products and categories or complex product names and titles or codes. They want to be able to search by SKU, by synonym. They want to be able to have suggested search terms, popular search terms, and obviously have typos corrected. Another fact, mobile drives over 40% of revenue in leading B2B companies. So questions to start asking yourself, maybe pop over to your website's mobile site and see, am I actually delivering on this expectation? Are, are customers gonna be able to understand what my business has to offer and can they ultimately purchase and research on a mobile device? So we talk about online and offline influencing each other. Additional research by the Boston Consulting Group found that an average of two thirds of purchases are significantly influenced by digital in B2B areas, such as industrial machinery, industrial supplies, and packing and shipping. Today's customer is gonna go elsewhere if you ultimately can't provide consistent and high value experiences in both the physical and the digital realm. Experience is really overtaking price and product as a way to differentiate your product and, its, and your business. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about two of Vimo's clients and how we've helped them overcome some of their B2B customer experience challenges. So our first case study is Lacotte, and they are a leading B2B supplier for the building industry in the Benelux area. Lacotte sells tools, building materials, hardware, electrical goods, doors, locks, etc. And they're a leader in their market with 60 stores in Belgium and the Netherlands. The project launched in about 14 months with over 600,000 SKUs, integrations with IBM ERP software and in-river PIM, self-service functionality and role-based access and restrictions. To quickly cite a couple of the challenges that Vimo needed to help Lacotte overcome, uh, we helped with manual order processing, Difficulty in reordering, an inability to request a quote and allow customers to order within their own procurement systems, and a lack of stock visibility in the supply chain. If we take a quick look at the front end, you can clearly see that we're delivering on a UX that has a strong B2C look and feel, and there's strong call to actions to log in, prominent search and easy filtering. As we've mentioned, B2B buyers still want a seamless experience and to be able to find products really easily. So one of the first challenges that we're gonna, I'm going to talk through is fast and friction-free purchasing. So when you have high volumes of recurring orders, it means you really need to prioritize and remove all friction from the process. Bima did this for Lacotte by ensuring customers had the ability to order by SKU, reorder quickly, and from their account section, save requ requ sorry, requisition lists, which is basically like an order template or base order where you can adjust quantities, remove, add items, etc. In addition to supporting the seamless purchasing process, Bima also helped to build a request for quote workflow, which allows buyers to request a personalized quote for them and their business specifically. Punchart makes it possible for the buyer to access the supplier's website from within their own procurement application. So this is really useful when a buyer is not feeling too comfortable with logging into a different system and it makes sure that they're comfortable with the process, they understand it, they feel special and it's personalized to theirs and their business's needs. This in addition can help to breed loyalty to a large extent. We also help to create complete inventory visibility. Uh, we integrated with all of their locations and network of supply chain partners to ensure real-time visibility and accurate inventory levels at all time. It's worth noting that this is something that you just cannot do when your data is siloed. 
And one of the very, very good strengths of Magento is its ability to integrate with multiple platforms. I'm going to talk about differentiating with personalized experiences. So to provide personal experience, Vimo has helped Lecoq create custom catalogs and price lists for their customers. And these are based on predefined groups. They also actively segment and target their customer groups and have tailored sites for their divisions, geography, channel partners, and accounts. The results, they pretty much speak for themselves. We've seen a 300% increase in transactions and a 250% increase in daily online sales. The second case study I'm going to talk you through is Bauhaus Sweden. So Bauhaus, <clears throat> Bauhaus brings quality tools and materials for home improvement to one store. They aim to offer the industry's biggest selection and provide effective customer service with the most knowledgeable staff. The key focus for this team is quality, and that speaks to customer experience quality and data quality. Stakeholders require exception reporting for all and any issues on site, third parties, failed imports, exports, etc. A lot of customization and work has been done here to manage this and ensure 100% visibility and stability and health of the environment. Bauhaus also boasts 18 stores in Sweden and a website that serves both their B2C and B2B customers. I'll quickly talk through some of the, the ways that Bimo has helped them to overcome their challenges. So we've built an automated fail-proof authentication wizard. This basically means a higher rate of approvals, faster times for approvals of business account applications. This customized integration allows buyers to register or apply for an account using their company organization number. The flow then allows for a Bauhaus employee to request more info, approve or deny any applications, all from one interface. It also allows them to assess the kind of credit limit that they wish to grant particular customers. This has really helped to significantly decrease the approval lead time from when a B2B client applies online for an account with Bauhaus by integrating an automatic check from a credit company. Custom integrations like these are a massive Magento platform benefit as we're able to build fit for purpose integrations and services that meet a very specific niche need for a B2B client. In addition to this, we've also helped them to build out their last mile solution. So Bauhaus Sweden takes care of deliveries by themselves in specific areas of Sweden. Um, they don't use a partner for this. The rationale is that customer demand and third party suppliers were just letting Bauhaus down. So they decided to take initiative and control that last mile experience. The value proposal was professional to the door delivery when you're at home. The pilot project went live in early 2018 and features Bauhaus's own logistics solution with the support of a native internal app for Bauhaus employees. And this supports deliveries for B2B customers too. The solution is unique to Bauhaus with no one else in Sweden having this function. And the native app controls the flow for drivers and distribution center personnel. There's also an integration with the transport planning software for routing deliveries and a modified Magento order flow. When we talk about their B2B portal, and this is a really important aspect, we've helped them build out a main account with connected sub-accounts. The owner of the account can administer different employees and oversee the individual payment options. The account owner also controls how much credit is left for the overall account. B2B customer portal is fully tailored and API session based with its own set of payment options and even offers a Bauhaus credit card, which is exclusive to Bauhaus and their customers. The results again, 290% increase in revenue and a 70% increase in B2C revenue per year. So when we look at the store, in fact, we're looking at their number one store. And over the last six years, they have slowly grown from being one of the smallest warehouses to being the biggest store in the group. And this really demonstrates the potential for online when a a business truly embraces its customer needs and starts to tackle these customer experience challenges head on. Uh, B2B businesses, we need to all kind of understand what these challenges are, make sure that we are going out into the market, talking to our customers and ensure that we tackle them head on and make sure that our priorities are all aligned. 
I'm going to quickly hand back to Eric now, who's going to quickly recap on some of the, the challenges that we've spoken about. Thank you, Georgia. Some, some incredible results there. Uh, so just to recap uh, very quickly on the five challenges that were highlighted throughout this uh, webinar. So the first one, obviously, around system integrations. It is very important to figure out a way to integrate these uh, different systems, both from the back end uh, systems of records, but also these systems of engagement and transactions that, that are getting more and more um, uh, used within the businesses. And examples here would be Lecot uh, that was just presented by Georgia here, where, where they obviously integrated the uh, product information management system uh, as well as the ERP. Uh, and when you find these type of integrations, uh, you also see that the consensus and the sort of executive buy-in um, is, is getting easier to deal with as well when you can speak across multiple areas of the business or multiple departments. The second challenge we talked about was the, uh, the systems and data silos. Uh, again, having uh, alignment between marketing, product information management, and sales systems and, and departments is required in order to provide an, an efficient customer service. Uh, and partners like Vimo can actually help you build that out throughout the organization and get that uh, alignment internally. We talked about legacy infrastructure uh, that wasn't really built for, for customer experience or user experience. Uh, our recommendation here would be to consider sort of replatforming with um, a more broad platform that can can uh, handle more aspects of the business uh, integrated and seamlessly, um, so that you don't have to have this disparate. And there, there's a reason today that there are so many uh, application rationalization projects uh, ongoing because there's been a, a huge increase in the amount of systems that are being run at the same time. Uh, in conjunction with the legacy systems. So have a think about that. We talked about what we call the elephant in the room, the marketplaces. So have a strategy for the marketplaces. Um, decide how you want to partner with them uh, and where you want to create your competitive edge uh, to, to not give up all your control to the likes of Amazon, uh, but definitely see them as a channel that can add value to you uh, in selling your products. The last the thing we talked about uh, was the, the business's ability to adopt new features. And I think we saw some great examples here with, uh, with Bauhaus that Georgia presented where they incorporated one of those key elements uh, or features that are, are being evaluated right now, you know, live chat functionality to be able to service the customers better uh, and, and more direct, as well as the uh, enhanced search functionality that allows them to uh, quickly deliver the right product to the right person at the right time as well as the customized uh, catalogs that uh, allows them to create more of a, a, a personalized B2B sales experience. So uh, I am going to uh, give, give this um, back to Rebecca. Uh, before that, I will just say that with Adobe and Magento, we can uh, make every experience personal and we can make every moment shoppable. And together with Wimo, we can actually make sure that that's a, that becomes a success from a people and process perspective as well. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. So first of all, thank you to Georgia and Eric for bringing us step by step through those challenges that they are seeing that B two B companies are facing when it comes to providing the expected digital customer experience, and then for talking us through how Lacotte and Bauhaus have overcome and are still overcoming some of these challenges. Uh, we do have a few minutes for questions, and we ha do have a few questions through from our audience so far. So we will take about five minutes for these. Any questions that we don't get to, we will do our best to contact you to answer it for you after the webinar. I see one through here, which I think I'll direct to you, Eric, at Magento. Um, the question is from Mark, and the question is, what are the main out-of-the-box B2B features with Magento, with Magento Commerce? Right, okay. Uh, so, so Magento Commerce, uh, as we mentioned, I think, a little bit earlier here, does have some out-of-the-box functionalities for B2B. Um, so things like company account creations um, and setting up um, roles and responsibilities and, and rights within those uh, co company accounts and buyer structures. 
um, requisition lists and custom requisition lists and, and managing those as well. Uh, we, it does come with a quick order function where companies can go and, and put uh, the, a repetitive sort of skew in and make a, a purchase quicker. Uh, well, so we're also, we're also supporting a RFQ process, which is you know crucial in, in B2B. Sometimes you want to buy uh, bigger volumes um, and, and try and negotiate a discount with the, the, the with the business, and then you know being able to issue a, a, a request for quotation is also part of the Magento standard functionality. Uh, and cast, custom catalogs and, and pricing as well uh, is pretty important features that that comes out of the box. I think those will that that's pretty much the, the basic out of the box functionality. Absolutely, for those um, for the more personalized with the custom um, uh, custom price and the quotes. Okay, uh, we do have another one here from Michelle. Now let me get this right. Um, and Georgia, this one might be might be for yourself. Um, for B two B organizations that already have an established offline sales process, but no online sales just yet, where do you recommend for them to get started? This is a, a really great question and. Uh a pretty common challenge is, you know, where, where do we start? Um, so it, it is a bit of a multi-layered challenge. Um, and I think there are sort of three aspects to it. The first being getting buy-in from your executive team and people internally. Uh, this is obviously incredibly important. Second is understanding your customer needs. And I would probably say the third is then making the correct selection in terms of the technology and the platform and then the partner that you choose to go with. Um, there's a great example, actually. I think it's of an Adobe client, a large pharmaceutical company where their C-suite actually visited each customer segment and asked them directly, and they ran uh, sort of Q&As on what the customers actually need from the B2B platform and from the buying experience. And I think that that's an incredibly powerful thing because you, at the same time of getting all the information from what your customer needs are, you're also embracing getting the buy-in from your executive team. And I think uh, that was a really good approach by this company, which is something that that you could potentially or other B2B businesses could possibly employ as well. Thanks, Georgia. We are pretty much bang on time, but we do have one more, I think we have time for one more question here, um, which has, has come in from Warren. Um, and similar to, to the, the question you just answered there, Georgia, on, on getting started, the question is, where would you recommend starting in tackling legacy systems? So Eric or Georgia, if you have a, a take on that. Yeah, so I, I mean, I, if, if um, there is already a sort of a, a rationalization project ongoing, uh, it's to tap into that and understand, you know, how that's being driven from the from an IT standpoint. Um, you know, what what are we retiring first what are we replacing or what are we moving uh, out of those sort of systems that we have in place uh, when it comes to a brand new approach if you don't already have a, a, an apps rationalization project ongoing or if you're part of it and you want to sort of initiate that uh, i would say starting starting to find uh, cloud-based applications that you can that you can sort of run on their own that's an extra layer on top of your erp uh, until you know what you want to do with your ERP systems and your order management systems and so on, and then potentially surround and replace rather than rip out and replace. Uh, so try and, and get systems that are rich in functionality outside of your of your core sort of ERP system uh, and that, that are easy to integrate. I mean, Magento is just one of those systems. There are many systems like that, uh, you know, for various needs. So trying to find open platforms would be a, a good starting point, I, I think. Georgia, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. Uh, I hope I answered the question. No, I, I think you covered it, Eric. I, um, I think one of the big challenges is sort of deciding which of these legacy systems becomes the version of the truth. And we often see big challenges with clients where they have uh, – you know, huge legacy ERP systems that uh, that we need to then integrate with. And it's always the sort of push and pull effect of, you know, who's going to be the master data source. Um, and I think 
identifying what that data is that you're going to need, how you're going to use it, um, is probably a good first step to understanding how you're going to tackle those integrations. Brilliant. Thank you both. And we are, we're at time now. Um, so I just want to say thank you again, Eric and Georgia, for taking the time out today and to the audience for your attention and for your questions, of course. Um, do keep an eye out for future webinars from us. We would love to have you join again. Thank you.